Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, okay, it looks like it's got a... Huh? Are you not live? Yeah, I'm live now. Okay, all right, good deal. All right, I got the little thing. My son always to the rescue. All right, let's try this thing again. Okay, all right. Can uh, <laughs> sorry about that. It's uh, not uh, not smarter than the average bear, I guess. So, what are you gonna do? Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, my uh, my other microphone was going up and down, so somebody put a little remark in there and said, "Yeah, you need a new mic." So I bought one of these little wireless thingies here. So, uh, yeah, all right. So, okay. Um, so I'm gonna. I've got a uh, a question. Someone was not able to join us to today. Um, so I'm going to kind of answer hers. She has a question about uh, the windfall elimination provision. Uh, windfall elimination provision is uh, a provision that uh, some people, there's uh, city, state, uh, uh, county employees throughout the country, they don't pay into Social Security. Their organizations have set it up so they don't have to pay. Um, and because of that, um, they... The, the benefit amount, they are notified about, you know, when you go on to SSA.gov and you get the, uh, um, you know, the regular statement, that is incorrect. Um, so a lot of people have questions about that, com just completely misunderstood. I did a video on that talking about uh, a um, the, the benefit amount in the statement is not correct. And... So you need to call, contact Social Security to get the correct amount. Um, and with her, she has got some money coming in, not very much, about 1500 or so, because um, she was a part-time teacher for a few years. So you can just go ahead and get that money, um, but I would call Social Security and find out. It sounds like you're going to have 30 years of coverage so that the windfall elimination provision probably won't pertain to you. So it shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. So there's that. Um, all right. Let's see here. Tracy, hello. How do you know the family max for both married couples filing SS at 50? Um, yeah, the, the family max is based on your the, the, the number holders, as we call the you know, whatever record you're filing on, on their PIA. And it's usually about 50 or excuse me, about 150 to 180 percent. Um, if you want to know the family max, um, the family max is uh, for, for everybody else out there. If you are receiving retirement benefits or disability benefits, other people in your family can receive benefits on your record. Um, but there's a limit. So if you have like, you know, 20 kids, we're not going to give, you know, well, Social Security is not going to give every kid, you know, $1,000. That's $20,000 a month. There is a max. So Congress decided there should be a max to that. And again, it's either about 150, 180% or so of the primary insurance amount. So it's the best way is just to call Social Security and say, hey, what's uh, what's my family max? Um, hopefully the person on the phone, um, that's super, super easy. All they do is pull up your record and it says right there, F max. It's very, very easy. So if uh, a Social Security employee can't answer that in two seconds, then, uh, yeah, they're not worth their salt. Um, and so the family max is that changes. So if you have, you know, your family max is, let's say, $3,000 left over for the kids and you have three kids and each one, let's say, gets $1,000, so it's $3,000, for instance. And so you get $3,000 divided by the three, that's $1,000 each. And let's say one of the children graduates high school and no longer receives it anymore. Then the other kids, depending on how much each child is entitled to, if they're entitled to up to $1,500, now they can get $1,500, $1,500 for a total of $3,000. Um, so the family max is still met it's, instead of divided by three, it's now divided by two and each child gets $1,500 up to 3000. But if 
another child goes off the record and most you can a child can receive is 1500 then that's it they're, they're, the, the remaining child is not going to um is not going to receive three thousand dollars they'll just receive the uh, the 1500 all right so let's see here wow lots of questions all right people calling is this all day long <laughs> all right so that's why uh yeah unfortunately uh i'm not able to answer uh that many calls that's why i'm going to exclusively do videos and uh, uh live events like this because most of the questions i answer are you know it's information for there's probably thousands you know hundreds of people thousands of people out there that have the exact same questions um, but if you need help um, in terms of signing up for Medicare, um, you know, anything like that, um, I've got a network of uh, uh, people throughout the country that I trust. And uh, so that's how you support the channel. Click the little thanks button down there if, uh, if you appreciate it and help support where you really need the help. Um, all kinds of, yeah, any way you can support us, we appreciate it. All right, John, question. Seven years old, I'm on uh, SSI in California. I'm starting to get SSI in July. How often do they do a CDR? Um, a CDR, yeah, it really depends on your particular condition when you're approved for um, disability benefits. The, the adjudicator at the DDS, the Disability Determination Service in the state of California, will determine based on your particular disability if it looks like there there might be medical improvement, you know, expected, then they might, you know, say after a year or after three years or after five years or after seven years or not at all. Um, so it really depends on a particular situation. But because you're on SSI, you will you will have RZs, um, uh, redetermination, um, basically uh, because SSI is a is a is a needs based welfare based program. Um, you'll have that type of, it, it'll be not necessarily disability review. It'll be a monetary type or income resources review. So every six months or a year or something like that, they will reach out to you and see if, you know, you won the billion dollar lottery or something like that. And if that's the case, then obviously they're going to cut you off. So, so just call them up and then watch my video on, uh, um, Watch my video on CDRs. Uh, yeah, um, a lot of people really freak out about CDRs and oh, am I going to get it? And it's just yeah. So watch my video on CDRs um, and take some of the stress out of your life. So, all right, uh, it's that time. How many years on SSDI before that stopped messing with you? <laughs> um yeah it's again watch yeah watch my uh video on uh on uh, cdrs and yeah I, I i wouldn't stress it um kind of the the long story short on that is uh cdrs um work cdrs medical cdrs um are um budget related so congress comes down once a year and says okay agency throughout the country you we're going to give you however million you know millions dollar dollars to you know um do medical cdrs continuing disability reviews and then the agency you know breaks it down to particular offices and say okay your office will do this much and so we you know we had in, in my particular office and it's about a, it changed all the time let's say about a hundred or so um in order to get a hundred medical CDRs done, we used to have to send out packages to a couple of hundred people because a lot of people had moved and don't respond and all kinds of different stuff. And so we had to meet our quota of doing X amount of medical CDRs. And if we did one more than we were supposed to, we got well, slapped on the hand a little bit. Um, if we didn't do exactly 100, we get slapped on the hand. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was so much time and effort just to make sure we hit the number correctly. It's, it's crazy. But anyway, they need to come up with a better system. Um, so um, you may get a package in the mail that says, we're going to do the CDR, CDR on you. And you might be one of the 200 that are sent out, but they only need to do 100. And 
they get your package back in and they've already felt their quota of 100. So they're not going to do anything on yours. So that's why I say on a CDR video I did as well, you know, just fill it out and send it and forget about it um, because they just might forget about it too. And because they don't have the quota to do yours or, or they might do it the next month or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, just, you know, and, and once you get closer to your sixties, uh, obviously once you hit your full retirement age, then you no more CDRs because you're no longer on disability. Um, once you hit your full retirement age, then you're on retirement benefits and there is no CDRs. So there's that. All right. Hopefully uh, that answered your question. If uh, you appreciate it, click the little thanks and the super chat and all that kind of good stuff and uh, pays uh, pays for my coffee today. I'm using the uh, the psychedelic uh, Volkswagen. I'm uh, I'm not really, I guess, a hippie, an old Marine Corps, but uh, I love Volkswagen buses. So anything Volkswagen bus, I've got Volkswagen buses all over the house here. So my wife hates it. But anyways, I love Volkswagen buses. So show me love. Appreciate it. Buy me a coffee, beer, whatever. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, sweet bug, I called Social Security to ask if husband military years was included in Windows Pen. I told the case was closed and they could not see see the file. Can I do anything else to find out? Um, the yeah, the case was closed. <laughs> Never heard of that before. That's, that's impossible because when it, it's called an MBR, Master Beneficiary Record. And you are on, if you're receiving widow's benefits, you are on his record. So when you call up and ask about your benefit amount, they're basically looking at his record. And then at the top of the MBR, the master beneficiary record, it'll say up there whether the military. Yeah. So the person you talked to just didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. So, however, um, what it was is the military, again, as I talked about in the beginning, um, the, the kind of the, the people that didn't pay into Social Security for, you know, are, there's still, you know, one or two or three percent of people th throughout the country that don't pay into Social Security. Um, but, you know, before the 1980s, a lot of the military didn't and federal employees didn't. Um, so Congress decided that, uh, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, the old military people will give them a little bit extra. It's, it's not very much. It's, you know, a few dollars or something, but Hey, a few bucks is a few bucks. So that's why some people get credit for military service. So if it's any time, usually like late sixties, seventies ish, um, if he was in the military during that time, um, yeah, hopefully they, they included that. So. You can, you know, again, call somebody else again and uh, hopefully um, you know, ask to speak to a supervisor because it's right there on top of the, the MBR. So, yeah, I don't know. All right. Let's see here. Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, okay. So we got that one. 70 on SSI. Sweet bug. Uh, Edwina. Would an annuity from divorce fall under WEP? No. Uh, I, I knew, wait a second. Uh, an annuity. So, and would my ability to collect on excess social security be limited or eliminated for me? An annuity. So, I. It sounds like this is going to be an annuity from a non-covered pension. Um. From yeah, from his work. Um, you know, rather than that regular 401k or something like that. Um, so if it's based, yeah, that's, uh, it, it really depends on the particular situation. Those are um, the annuities and whether you have control over it, um, are, you know, if you're already receiving, um, any type of income from a non-covered work, you should really notify Social Security. That's where a lot of overpayments come from is people don't notify. And uh, then Social Security eventually finds out, you know, five or 10 years from now. Um, so I would call and you should have the information on the annuity with you, whether it was from non-covered work, whether he, you know, worked 30 years of substantial earnings, they will be able to know, they'll, they'll be able to find out that. They'll be able to just look on the record. Oh, he was a, a federal employee split. Uh, so the federal employee, so it's an OPM type pension.
pension. Yeah, so I, I would uh, I would call Social Security and uh, find out uh, um, you know whether it's already on his record, um, but probably not. But just to be on the safe side, I would get a determination um, from them, and that way you know they can't come back later and say, "Hey, you didn't tell us." So I would call him up and say, "Hey, you know he is getting you know I'm getting this from him." And it's this amount of much, and it started this time at this particular time when it was when it was entitled and when he was eligible. So basically, when you're entitled is when can you start? When you're eligible is when you actually start. So you'll need those two dates. You'll need to know how much, when um, he was entitled, and when he was eligible. So when he could have started that annuity, and when it actually did start, and then tell Social Security, and then write that down and say, hey, I called the 800 number on February 22nd, and uh, I talked to John Smith in Baltimore or wherever, and I told him about this, and he told me it's already reflected or it doesn't count or whatever the case may be. So I would definitely do that. Uh, okay, uh, meaning before the stop sending you see here. Okay. Um, all right, bra man. Um, da, 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 da. How does an ex-husband married less than six years fit into the SSDI approval process for ex-wife? Her case manager has questions for me. Uh, how does an ex married? Yeah, it's uh, no, no relevance for a social security disability approval process for ex-wife. Yeah, no, I don't see how that, unless you were working for that person you were his employee and uh yeah i don't it were you married when he passed if you were married when he passed uh, you don't you don't have to be you know you don't have to have the 10 years of marriage because you were married when he passed but uh yeah um and and that's only to evaluate whether you're entitled to disabled widow's benefits or widow's benefits or something like that. But in terms of the disability claim itself, yeah, no, no, uh, no relevance. All right, Denise, if I plan to apply for spousal benefits at FRA, full retirement age, will the COLA from 62 if any be applied to, or will spouse benefit at FRA be starting point without benefit at COLAs from age 62? Um, yeah, COLAs are, are always included on there automatically. Um, it's, basically figured into the system um they maybe what you're thinking is indexing um when they figure out your primary insurance amount the pia um they like you know if if you worked in you know 1975 and you made you know twenty thousand dollars they index that based on a wage index and they bring that what i say twenty thousand dollars they bring that $20,000 into kind of today's terms, but they only bring it up into not necessarily today, but recent terms. Um, that's possibly where you might have seen that. But in terms of COLA, the, the cost of living allowance that Congress, you know, decides that's automatically just, you know, some programmer back in Baltimore, um, you know, pushes the button, you know, 3.2% and they do 3.2% for everybody. So everybody gets the COLA. So, yeah. So it doesn't matter when you file or anything, everybody gets the COLA. Uh, Tracy. So that's why I don't get half of his previous three kids. Yeah. Um, so I think that goes back to the, um, goes back to the family mex question. All right, that's Sweet bug, let's see. He was in the service in the 70s, did five years, honorable discharge service. Can I just want to know? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So in the 70s, yeah, that's definitely a time that uh, could very well be uh, an influence on his PIA, his primary insurance amount. So, yeah, I would definitely call up and uh, um, hopefully get somebody on the phone that can, you know, look at his record correctly. All right, let's see what else here. Uh, if it's um, when I call Social Security to decline Part B, should I wait until they send me the packet with a Medicare card? Yeah, yeah, because uh, Social Security doesn't 
show that you have Part B until uh, Medicare issues Part B. So it sounds like you possibly might be getting close to 65 years old and uh, essentially 100 days before you turn 65, um, Medicare will send you that packet with the A and the B and all that kind of good stuff. So I am assuming that you have um, other coverage from current work, your work or your spouse's work. Um, because if you don't, then you, you technically, you know, you can decline part B, but then you'll be penalized for the rest of your life. So if at 65, not everybody has to enroll in Medicare Part B. Um, some of the reasons you wouldn't is you currently have health insurance from current current work, not COBRA, not retirement plan, anything like that. It has to be current work. And so if you do that, then you won't get penalized. If it's your spouse's current work, same, and, and they have to have an employer, uh, work for an employer that has 20 or more employees. Um, so if you have either of those, then you can go and decline. And then, you know, a year, two years, three years, four years later, um, you can sign up for Part B and no penalties. You'll just have to fill out a, a couple of forms, the 40B and the 564. And guess what? I've got a video on that. Um, got hundreds of videos. So, um, oh, and uh, um, for, um, my website is finally done. So we redid the website. Cost me quite a bit out of my retirement funds, but um, so show me love, love please. Um, so the website, mygovexpert.com. So let me go ahead and put it down there. So it's www.mygovexpert.com. So mygovexpert.com, it's, uh, um, it's completely free. Um, and you just go in there and you create a playlist. So it asks you some questions, you know, one of the questions, you know, how much is your income? That determines, you know, if you're, it's under $25,000, then what it does is you answer, it's like five or six questions and it creates a playlist. And uh, you just, you create an account and again, it's completely free. Um, put your email in there, your name and your, you don't have to put, I'm, I'm going to take the whole phone number thing out there. Cause I'm not, we're not going to call you. The only people that have access to it are me and my son. Um, and we're not going to call you. So you can put a fake phone number in there. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to take the phone number thing out in the future, but you create an account and that way you're notified if there's any updates. So basically you, you answer the questions, you create an account and then it comes up with a playlist out of my hundreds of videos and the, and the hundreds of videos I'm going to do in the future, it'll create a playlist based on your answers. So if you said, you know, um, you are in Texas and you make under $25,000 and you're on disability, then I'm going to show you your playlist is going to be, you know, uh, you know, financial assistance for people under $25,000 and you know, some, I'm, I'm adding more state related videos. Um, but it all says, say, you know, how to make sure, you know, you're doing the right thing on disability and everything like that. So rather than, you know, kind of dig through my, my hundreds of videos, um, that's, that's, that was the problem I was having why I've got so many calls as people would call and, uh, um, they would have a question and I was invariably saying 99% of the time, I just did a video on this last week. I just did a video answering your question, you know, a month ago. So I'm like, okay, how can I, how can I be smarter about this? So I came up with this playlist thing. It's the only one in the country like it. Um, pat myself on the back there. It's good. I don't know. It cost me too much money, but uh, anyway, so I uh, set up the playlist, and so you can go in there, answer the questions, and and I have a specific playlist for you. And I'm always updating it. That's why you know you put your email in there, and, and just come back, and I, I probably won't even email you, but, you know. But just come back every month or so and check the playlist and see if there's any updates or anything like that. So there's that. Oh, thank you, Denise. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on spousal benefit for those five years before actually drawing. Yeah. So yeah, the, the cola is. Uh, yep. You, you always get the cola. So it's a uh, that's a beautiful thing. And that's 
Um, one of the, there's a, these YouTubers out there just torquing me off. Um, the, every time some little house representative, congressperson somewhere in the country and, you know, Texas or Tennessee or West Virginia or whoever wants to get reelected, they come up with some crazy idea, legislation, bill that they put in front of Congress. And, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, give all, all, all Social Security recipients, you know, $6,000 and free ice cream for life and all this kind of crazy stuff. And then the YouTubers pick it up and they put that on their YouTube channel thumbnail thing. It says $2,400 coming soon, free ice cream for life coming soon. And you push it and it says, oh yeah, there's this bill and you know, it's probably not going to pass, but you clicked on my website. Yay. So yeah, I wish they would really stop that. Um, but uh, to, to kind of answer your, your cola type question, um, there, there is, something that really, really needs to be done. You know, last year we got over 8% COLA increase. This year, a little over 3%. Um, but, you know, this is based on, you know, kind of a, a, a bucket of um, costs of, uh, you know, a bucket of goods in the economy. And they don't really, how they do the calculations of it is, is not very good. Um, they're they're always very way way off so it's been calculated i've seen some reports that you know over the last 20 25 years every single year was short by about two percent so you know social security checks out there should be a good you know 20 30 40 percent more than what they should be if the calculations were done correctly and uh yeah, so there's that. Because um, the average check out there is about eighteen hundred dollars, and uh, yeah, it should be, you know, should be a lot, should be more. But and, and then I just did a I just did a video. I've, I've released some of the um, uh, the shorts on it, but I am doing a series of videos that. Uh, um, are kind of 50 plus ways to uh, live on social security alone to kind of help you out uh, for all those people out there struggling for you, your family, relatives, anybody you know that is uh, kind of struggling. Um, I'm going to release the first video either today or tomorrow, and it's going to be a series of videos, and I'm going to cover a whole bunch of different uh, programs out there um, that may make you or someone you know their life quite a bit easier. So watch out for those. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. What else do we have here? Oh, living abroad. Yeah, that's uh, that's, uh, that's yeah. There's I'm getting a lot of calls from people that have just said you know, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a month I'm getting for Social Security. Um, yeah, that doesn't even pay for rent in the United States. But if I go to Panama or Portugal or the Philippines or something like that, you know, that's a, uh, I live the high life. So there's a ton of people moving overseas. Yeah. Um, but uh, invariably one of the big questions is, can you, and if you're a U.S. citizen, yeah, you can pretty much live anywhere except for, as I always say, North Korea or Cuba. So if you're looking to enjoy the beaches in North Korea, then sorry to, yeah, you better have your own cash and money. Um, and if you're not a U.S. citizen, um, there are you can go into. Uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to. I haven't done a web uh, a video on this one, but I'm going to do one for expats, um, people that move overseas and you know and, and end up getting married or something. Um, uh, you have to have, be a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. It really depends on what country you're in. And then there's a Social Security has a great website. Um, that tells you, okay, if you're living in this particular country, you have to have this type of immigration status in order to receive benefits, social security benefits and stuff like that. So it's pretty complicated. So 
I'm going to do a video on that. Um, but a lot of people have problems when uh, uh, about Medicare. Um, you know, getting the money is fine, but they say, well, you know, I live in the Philippines and so I don't really need Medicare. Um, so I'm going to get health insurance over there or wherever. And, uh, and then I get a lot of phone calls from people that have done that. And then five or 10 years later, they decide it's not for them or they get really sick and they want to come back to the United States and they don't have, you know, they have Medicare A maybe, but they don't have B and they don't have any type of supplement to cover the other 20%, all the other co-pays and co-insurance. And, uh, you know, they can't get it set up. Um, you know, you have to wait until the general enrollment period from January 1st to March 31st. So if they come back, they've got some, you know, heart attack or some terrible condition in, in July, um, they're out of luck until January. January, they can sign up and their, you know, their Medicare and everything will start in February. But so they have to delay and they get the penalty for the rest of their lives. So think hard and long about that. Um, Tracy, sorry for all the questions. No problem. Um, how can you find out if you're 80, 90%, 100% disabled? There, there is no such thing in Social Security. Um, they, they have that in the Veterans Administration. So I hired a lot of vets when I ran my Social Security office. And uh, um, yeah, some of them were 50, 60, 70, 80% uh, disabled, but you know, they are still able to work. Social Security doesn't have anything like that. They don't have partial. You're either disabled or you're not. That's it. So. Uh, Follow-up question. Could it possibly involve qualifying her to receive the child benefit? 50% of it based on child support payments I'm making. Um, yeah, the, the child support. Oh, okay, so I think this is uh, based on the question uh, um, about why would they ask about? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If you yes, 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 yes. So if you are filing for disability and you have children, those children are also the auxiliaries. They're also uh, possibly entitled to benefits as well. So the Social Security person would need to find out where to send that money um, or where to take that application. And it has nothing to do with uh, um, child support or anything like that, um, unless, you know, um, the judge would have to make that determination because there's a lot of people that, you know, have to pay a thousand dollars a month for child support and then they become disabled and the child gets thousand dollars, you know, from the disability. Plus they also get a thousand dollars from child support. So it really depends how the judge that, decides the divorce and the child support and all that makes the determination whether they'll whether they say okay you've been given a thousand dollars now the child's going to get an extra thousand dollars based on disability so we'll just call it a draw and we'll just say that's it so you don't have to pay a thousand dollars anymore so that's the judge's determination all right um either. no problem thank you no problem you're welcome um, having TRICARE, I was told to get my Social Security at 65. I have three more years for TRICARE for life, getting widow's pension. Will it be kind of for TRICARE? For... Um, yeah, so TRICARE, when you have TRICARE, um, one becomes a secondary, one becomes a primary. So TRICARE, in order to save money, you know, typical government type thing, even though it's still government health care, you know, TRICARE, the Veterans Administration, tries to move cost over to the Social Security Administration or to Medicare. And so they say, you know, hey, we'll give you TRICARE, but, you know, you have to get Medicare. So Medicare agency has to pay for some of it so we can save our budget and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so you definitely do. Uh, um, it, it, yeah, they kind of make you. So I would reach out to them and uh, confirm that they're still uh, making you sign up for Medicare. And then some people that have TRICARE also sign up for a Medicare Advantage so they can, you know, go to other places and get some little bit extra benefits. So if you want to check that out, let me know. Um, normally, um, Medicare supplements I recommend, but for TRICARE, 
um, because it's a zero premium Medicare. A lot of the Medicare Advantage plans are zero premium. Um, so you get extra benefits without having to pay a, a monthly premium like you would for a Medicare supplement plan. So um, go to the uh, um, uh, website um, or go to my YouTube channel and then click on the little thing and uh, put down there that you want to talk to someone about uh, about Medicare. And I'll have someone in our network reach out to you and kick around all your options. Oh, thank you. Somebody, uh, somebody else. Oh, thank you very much, Rob, man. I appreciate it. All right. Let's see here. Da, da, da. Go ahead. Okay. We have to go through the office. All right. What else uh, am I missing? BH in Bayou City. I logged into Social Security site to get my SBA in future Social Security. I assume the amount listed for each year do not include COLA amounts. I'm 58 now. Um, all right. Yeah. So for the future, correct, correct. Yeah. So, um, so if you go into social security, ssa.gov and you uh, set up an account, which I always recommend and look at, uh, your estimates for the future, then yeah, it, it because it just kind of guesstimates. And one of the things that a lot of people mess up on that is they go onto ssa.gov, they set up the account and it says, okay, in five years from now, you're going to get $2,000 a month. And then they have that, they print off that statement. And then five years from now, they come in there and they say, well, hey, it's not $2,000. Um, one of the things is, is that it's based on future estimates. One is, you know, maybe they include COLA in there, but it's not the correct COLA because they don't know until we know. But another thing is, is that they um, estimate it based on your current earnings. So they figure, okay, you're currently working right now and you're making $50,000 a month, or excuse me, a year. Um, and so they figure going forward, you're gonna make $50,000. And so they use that as a calculation, as an estimate to figure out the $2,000. So basically, if you stop working immediately and then you have five years of zeros there, Again, Social Security determines your benefit amount by the high 35 years. So if, you know, you stop working, then that benefit amount estimate that you receive online is incorrect. Um, so a lot of people um, kind of make that, you know, mistake and they say, hey, my benefit amount is wrong. Well, it was right based on when you, you know, had the system calculate your, your benefit amount. So. There's that. All right, John, uh, I live with my son. I began my SSI program last July. I contributed household expenses regarding the RZ. We'll have to go to the office for that review or can I do it over the phone? Yeah, yeah. I'd, um, <laughs> most uh, claim specialists would uh, rather do it on the phone. So um, yeah, nowadays, particularly nowadays, um, if there's any proofs or anything that you need to provide, you know, rent or receipts or anything like that, they'll just request it and you, you know, mail it in. Always make copies. Um, you can actually fax it in as well. Um, and you're like, faxes, and does, do they still exist? It actually goes when you, that's actually a better way if you, if you fax it in, because if you mail it, you don't know whether it's going to get lost or something. Um, but if you fax it in and you fax it in on a, a fax machine that has a kind of a, a, a kicks out a little thing that, yes, this fax did go through, it actually goes to a paperless system in Social Security in that particular office called WorkTrack. Um, so you have to fax it to the particular number. Uh, you can go to ssa.gov and get the fax number for that particular office. You fax it in there and then it goes into a paperless system. And uh, um, I was one of the guys that designed that paperless system. So it's basically the fax doesn't print off a piece of paper on the other side. It goes into a paperless system that goes into the computer and it's easy to track and everything like that. So, um, yeah, so that was fun designing that system. So, all right, let's see here. Bruce. Hi, Ed, uh, expat here. See, there's so many expats nowadays. Um, um my filing is going through SSA at U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. Okay, all right. Yeah, the uh, um, I wonder if Jason is still there. Um, 
He was in San Mateo, California, he moved around, very hard charger guy. And he was uh, in charge of the federal benefit unit in, in all of Asia. They have, uh, they have, you know, one in, in Europe and South America. And so it's basically out of, they work out of embassy. I think it's, it's I don't know, he might be gone by now. But, uh, um, might be another person. But Jason was the guy before and he was out of Manila and he was in charge of all of Asia, you know, China and uh, Australia and uh, Japan. And, um, but you can actually go to emb any embassy you're at and they will have a federal benefit unit and it'll be basically a, um, a, a embassy personnel that's also assigned that kind of workload. And, um, you know, if they, you know, they're, they, they know a little bit about it, about social security and everything, but if they don't, then they reach out to the, uh, the expert, the, the social security expert to get any answers on your questions. So, all right, let's see here. What else? Um, Elma, did I, I think I might have Christian, missed your question. Uh, I was on SSI, uh, DI, so disability insurance converted to FRA, November converted, yep, when she received her, uh, when she reached her full retirement age. Uh, Ex-husband died January 24th, sorry to hear that. If I have a benefit, restrict my FRA benefit, I have to pay back November, December, January in order to begin receiving as higher FRA. Um... Not necessarily I'm trying to figure the timing here. So you're already, you already receiving your own benefits. No, you can, you can, because it's a survivor benefit. You can just stop your own and then jump over to his. That's fine. But I'm kind of reading in between the lines here. Possibly you want your benefit to increase based on delayed retirement credits but because you started taking them, you can't get delayed retirement credits um, as a retirement. So yeah, in that case, yeah, you would uh, um, possibly have to pay that money back in order to you know, go on his benefit amount. So I, I would check with uh, Social Security and have them look at your record and see how it's all set up and everything. But there's a possibility that, uh, yes, so you could so call them up and say, hey, uh, here, here's what I want to do. I want to file for survivor benefits and I want mine to increase, you know, delayed retirement credits until I reach 70 years old, if that's going to be more. Um, and then ask, can I do that? And the person that you talk to, obviously, on the phone, it won't know. You'll have to actually set up an appointment to talk to a claim specialist on the phone or in the office, um, and they will have to run the numbers, and they probably won't be able to. It's a very, very unusual, yeah, very, very unusual circumstance. So they will have to get a technical expert, and uh, so if they give you a pat answer, don't believe it. Um, they'll have to ask a technical expert, um, and uh, yeah, so there's that. So yeah, that's a good strategy. Yes, that's a good uh, good thinking. I like I like it. I like it a lot. I like when people, uh, you know, you got all these billionaires taking uh, advantage of the taxes and you know Walmart and everything. You know, getting their billion dollar yachts because uh, they're not paying people enough, so they have to go on Medicaid. So I call them the billion dollar Medicaid yachts, food stamp yachts. So they take advantage of yeah. So. But that's my two cents. And so there's that. Um, joke, you're the real thing. Only one to believe. Ah, huh, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Sorry, I missed me. Yet, so I'm, I think I'm back on track. Um, I went to this. My SSI went to step four. Then they deny on the 20th. But my SSA also went to step four. Still there pending on. So step four. Um, what do we mean by uh, step four? Uh, in terms of the approval um, for disability, 
Um, so are we talking about the, the initial claim and then you did the initial claim and then you did um, a reconsideration and then you did an ALJ administrative law judge and then you did the appeals council out of false church. Is that the step four are we talking about or is it something else? So. Um, Ian, as a carpenter, I have many holes in my work history listings from SSL security. How can I retrieve missing employment from the seventies? Oh yeah, that's, uh, um, I, I just did a, a, a video on, uh, um, directed to people 50 and under and, uh, you know, with some of the cautionary tales that, uh, you know, people tell me all the time, Oh, somebody should have told me that, you know, last month or, you know, before I filed or a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So I did a video on that. And uh, uh, well, the problem with my videos is uh, I guess I don't have enough cats or things blowing up. And uh, so I'm not getting that many views. Hopefully y'all can help me out and go in there and comment and like and subscribe and share all that. More people need to get the information. So we're, we're trying. Uh, my son and I are trying our best to get, uh, get the word out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, anything y'all can do, we appreciate it. Um, but in your particular case, yeah, the seventies, one thing you can do is obviously you probably don't have, you know, the W2s and everything. Um, number one is I wonder why there's holes in the seventies. Um, if you worked at a place, an actual, um, job that you got a W2, they, you know, those are pretty good at being recorded. If you were a 1099, then obviously, you know, you know, you had to file the taxes and pay the FICA and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people, you know, they don't make that, you know, they don't make enough. So they never filed their stuff. But if you actually worked for an employer and you worked, let's say if you worked for the same employer for a few years, um, what I would do is, um, I don't know if you've already done this, but you can call social security and they have this thing called a suspense file where there's this kind of file limbo where there's probably billions of dollars in it and it they're just floating around because social security doesn't know who these earnings belong to um and eventually they'll be found out when you go in there like like you and you know people go in at 62 or 63 i used to have this happen all the time they say oh yeah you know, my my earnings for 1982 aren't reflected there and i'm like oh okay here you worked at uh um you know wherever, you know, uh, Microsoft in 1982 and 81, you worked at Microsoft and 83, you worked at Microsoft. And so they look at 1982 and they look if there's anything close and they say, oh, okay, yeah, here's uh, yeah, it looks like somebody, you know, messed up the social security number and this is you, your name is John Smith and this is your social security number, except for the last two were messed up. All right. So they take those earnings and they put it on your record. Um, so that's a possibility for you. So if you worked in basically the same place around that time, I would call social security and tell them to look in the suspense file, um, and do a little search. I've found, you know, hundreds of thousands of those for people. And, um, uh, it's you know, relatively easy. Um, if, if they're in there, if they're not in there, then yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, all right, let's see here. Mm. Tracy and go for a PPO inside of an HMO. If I have a lot of doctors, I found that. Yeah. So she's talking about uh, Medicare Advantage plans, the Medicare supplement plans, um, though those don't have any, you know, networks. You can go to anybody, you know, anybody in the country, any doctor in the country that takes Medicare, you can go, you know, no questions asked, basically. Um, but Medicare Advantage, um, you have networks. Um, so usually, you know, to get larger networks, you get a PPO, um, smaller networks, HMO, but that's not always the case. I've, uh, enrolled a lot of people, helped them enroll in Medicare. And so if you need help enroll in Medicare, um, you know, let us know and, uh, we can definitely check it out make sure you're in the best plan. But for people um, that are like in a big city, usually because the HMOs are, they have a little bit more benefits and uh, uh, 
you know, more cost savings because, you know, the insurance company, you know, they're in it for a profit. So they negotiate with the uh, doctors and to reduce prices and stuff like that. And they give you a bunch of extra benefits in order to entice you to sign up for their plan instead of another plan. So in the big cities, there's so many doctors in the HMOs that uh, usually the HMOs are kind of a better deal depending on your particular area. But people that are away from the cities, out in the country or out in the desert or something like that, a PPO is, yeah, definitely the way to go. So it really depends on your particular situation and what you're actually looking for. So there's that. All right. You didn't design work track. No way a Marine did that. <laughs> yeah, I was on the team. It was out of Atlanta. So um, I wasn't the program or anything like that because, you know, um, for those people that uh, just saw that uh, I was trying to log into YouTube to do live and my sound wasn't on, I was calling my son to figure out, hey, I get the sound. So I'm not a computer expert. But in terms of, um, I was the lead person that gave feedback to the Atlanta region, the, the computer programmers, because we uh, I ran the busiest office, one of the third busiest office in the country, and so we used it a lot. So uh, they always called us up and called me up and said, "Okay, we just we just did this new function. Tell me how it works and stuff like that." So yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, an old marine um, should could I apply for Social Security and SSA at the same time? Sixty three years old, and should I do everything online or at least contact local office? Okay, good, good, good. Um, hopefully, my words getting out of there. Out there, I did one. On, I did a terrible title. The the thumbnail on the YouTube thing. I need to work on that. So um, I'm getting better at YouTube. Uh, obviously, not great because we don't have millions of views. Uh, but any help is appreciated. Um, but um, I, there's a lot of people that I talk to that regret, you know, they're 66, 67, 68. And I tell them, oh yeah, you should have filed for disability. I didn't know I could do both. Yeah. So if you're under your full retirement age and you are disabled, um, again, disability uh, for social security is the inability to work. So you can do both. And here's, here's my recommendation. You watch the video on that. Um, and, uh, um, it's basically, um, if you don't necessarily need re money coming in right now, I would just file for disability and wait for them to kind of approve it. And usually it takes anywhere from three to six months on the initial claim to get an approval or denial. And if you're really disabled, um, hopefully they'll approve you, you know, from step one, and then your benefits will start. However, if you need some money to come in while you're waiting for your disability to be decided, then file for retirement. And the reason I say that is when you file for retirement early, your benefit amount is reduced. You know, it's not very much, a few dollars a month, but hey, a few bucks is a few bucks. And you start getting your retirement benefits, and then once your disability is approved, that however many months you got is reduced from your disability for the rest of your life. Um, so that's why I say, you know, if, if you can, just, you know, just file for disability, wait, and then if they deny it, then you can go ahead and file for retirement or so. But yeah, so it really depends on the. Um, your particular situation, but yes, you can do both. Um, um, a, ri a rib dib, uh, a rib dib. So a retirement insurance benefit or a disability insurance benefit. So again, you know, as I mentioned, one of my videos I just did, um, social security is just insurance. You know, people ask me, why are you doing, you know, why are you referring people to burial insurance and life insurance and, you know, Medicare, you know, insurance and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's, cause it's all insurance, you know, SSDI, social security, disability insurance, RSI, retirement survivors insurance, social security, you know, SSI is uh, supplemental security income. That's not insurance. That's a welfare based program, but everything else is insurance. So, but it's not enough. So that's why I recommend, you know, that's why I help people because I've seen the end result of people, you know, 
you know, depending on Social Security alone for survivors and burial and life and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I recommend to supplement your, you know, your government entitlements, your government benefits with some other type of, you know, uh, insurance. And that's why I've set up a network across the country of people I know and trust that are not going to be pushy. They're just going to give you your information. And if you want to get burial insurance or life insurance or estate planning, um, anything like that, then uh, um, reach out to us and uh, yeah, I'll, we'll hook you up with someone in the network. And full disclosure, um, that's how we support all of this, uh, the website and all that kind of stuff is they just, you know, they, uh, when we introduce you, they, you know, support us. So it's a win, win, win. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So any, any help is intensely appreciated. Are we getting stimulus checks for 24, 25? Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. And that's another scammy thing that you see on the internet, all these YouTubers out there and TikTokers. Yeah, they're out there and oh, checks are coming, checks are coming, and then click our button, click the button here, and yeah. Um, I, in order to get to some some more views, sometimes I put kind of a, I don't go that crazy sensationalist, you know, BS hype, um, but some of the thumbnails I wish I didn't have to do, like I do, but in order to get people. To watch some of the videos, I have to be a little bit sensationalistic, which I don't like. I'd, I'd rather be boring. A lot of the stuff is boring, but it is what it is. But in social media land, you have to be crazy and blow stuff up. And so maybe I'll blow stuff up in the future. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, um, so stimulus checks, uh, prob probably not. Yeah. But you never know. You never know. All right, uh, let's see here. Representative in Kansas City, Missouri, started a final review of your application. So for most people, the review takes two to four weeks, but the SSA denied. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's uh, okay. All right, um, so yes. So I wonder what level that is. Uh, Deanna, is that, uh, I did both in the SSI, but SSA pending either. So yeah, basically, uh, People always freak out when they file for Social Security disability benefits and they immediately get a denial letter. Um, yeah, so uh, and so that that's why anytime I took a Social Security disability claim, what happens is we have to address both titles. It's internal lingo. So Title II and Title 16. So SSDI, Disability Insurance, is Title II of the Social Security Act of 1935, well, later amended in the 60s. Title 16 is SSI, the Supplemental Security Income, the one that was started in the early 1970s. So when you come in and file for disability, we take claims for both titles, SSDI and SSI. And... If you tell us that, you know, if, if, if you're, well, if your benefit amount is, if you're approved for disability is over, a, you know, $900 or $1,000, then you're not qualified for SSI. And we immediately close that out. We close out that issue that, yes, we address that issue. Or if you tell us that, you know, you've got $20,000 in the bank or you've got some other income coming in or your, or your spouse works, then we will close out that SSI issue. We'll push the button to close that issue out and the computer system automatically sends you a letter saying you're denied or, you know, whatever the case may be. And people freak out and, and always tell them, OK, read on the top of the letter. What does it say? It says supplemental security income. Yeah, you were denied on SSI for the welfare based program because of X, Y or Z. The other part, Title II is still going on, so don't sweat it. Um, and it sounds like uh, with Deanna there, basically. Uh, um, it's going to continue on and it, it's approved perhaps hopefully at one level and now they're you know buttoning it up and doing the calculations or maybe qr the quality review board um has been yeah did both of them have been sitting 18 months yes i had credit for retirement and said that even though yeah so yeah sitting for 18 months so it sounds like it might be uh um in the second stage. So yeah, hopefully uh, um, if it's sitting wherever it is for too long, make sure you reach out 
to that particular office and say, hey, you know, I got word that you're, you know, you're about to push the button and give me some money. Um, I need that money. So anything you do to hurry it up, you'd appreciate it. So. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I think that was curious. Do you have Glasgow, UK ties? My grandma, madam, it was weird. Yeah, it's a uh, weird is actually, uh, um, uh, I guess, going way back is from Scotland. And it's the Anglicized version of De Vere. And uh, kind of my family theory is the true Shakespeare was Edward de Vere, which is the 17th Earl of Oxford. So I, I would argue that same family as Shakespeare, but that's one theory. It's called the Oxfordian theory. So, but anyway, so I'm a geek on stuff like that. Um, all right. I've never been back to Scotland though. I've never been, never been to Europe. I got to go one day. All right, uh, user, Dr. Weir worked in the U.S., then didn't work for seven years, then started again in 2020. When can I apply for dual? It says I can't apply now. Yeah, so you have to work five out of the last 10 years. Again, because all of this is insurance, you are insured, and then you also have to be currently insured for disability. So basically, you have to have paid into the system you know, for at least 10 years. So that makes you insured, but then you have to be currently insured, which means that five out of the last 10 years, you had to have worked and paid into the system. So it's, I, you know, I think of like, like car insurance, like if you had, you know, Geico 20 years ago and you paid tons of money to Geico, but you haven't paid Geico in the last 10 years and you have an accident, you can't go to Geico and say, Hey, you know, I just, just had an accident. Uh, can you fix my car? I'll say, no, you don't, you know, you not in, you, know, you, you were insured, but you're not insured now. So it's the same type of situation. So yeah. Um, so you have to be currently insured. So I would check um, because currently insured. So if you worked, you know, the last four years and this is your fifth year and uh, you're currently working, but if you're currently working, then you really can't file for disability because you're currently working again, depending on how much, you know, money you're making. But anyway, so I would call them up and find out, uh, um, what, uh, you know, when you're eligible file to file for disability benefits. Um, all right, let's see. Didn't want to, didn't want plan B part B a day told them to send the forms. They didn't calling them three times. Now it's over three months. They took more of my check. How can I get it back? All right. So you didn't want part B. Um, and you tried to get that canceled and they dropped the ball and, uh, yeah. So you just, uh, yeah, you just, uh, unfortunately, you got to keep at it and you've got that protective filing in the sense of, you know, you told them to do X, Y, and Z at, you know, however many months ago and they didn't do it. So it's not necessarily your fault. It's not your fault. Um, so yeah, you just, unfortunately just have to keep calling him and pushing them and saying, Hey, you know, I, you know, I told you, so I want my money back and the local office unfortunately won't be able to do it they'll have to go to the processing center and because the processing center will have to coordinate with Medicare to, to not, you know, to cancel it and get your money back and all that kind of good stuff. So it's a, it's a nightmare process. Unfortunately, I'd be better if they caught it from the beginning. It's one of those things where, <clears throat> um, I did a video on, uh, um, uh, one of my sensationalist titles is social security employees don't care about you. And, uh, People always, wait a second, it's not what it seems, the title of it. It's basically, um, like in this particular case, you know, they, you know, they got nothing against you. Um, I, I, as I always told my employees, I'm close to a hundred employees. I said, um, you know, it, it's easier to do things right the first time because it takes like 10 times longer to fix it. So if you make a mistake, it's probably going to take you 10 times longer if you just did it right the first time. So, and then, you know, we reviewed people's claims and their actions and everything like that. And so, um, 
yeah. So the, the Social Security employees, people always say, oh, yeah, I went down the office and the reason they didn't give me money or do this is because they didn't like me, didn't like the way I look, you know, they didn't like my hairline or lack of. And I said, no, they, you know, they, they, yeah, they, no, they don't, they don't care about you in, in that respect. Um, they just don't want to make a mistake to make more work for themselves. Um, that's the, that's the number one driving motivation for social security employees. If you ask me is they don't want to mess anything up because they don't want to have to fix it later. And because they have already got enough to do, they, you know, the social security employees are completely inundated with work. And, uh, so if they, you know, push the wrong button and, you know, adjudicate your claim incorrectly, the wrong date or the wrong amount or something like that, it'll get caught, you know, it, you know, it'll take time, but it'll get caught. And that person will have to go back there and fix it. And they're like, oh, all right, I'll never do that again. So that's the number one motivation is to not make mistakes because yeah. So there's that. Uh, da, da, da. Thomas, I'm a disabled veteran on SSDI. My wife became disabled with cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And can she collect SSA under my benefit? Um, disabled SSA. So if you're an SSDI, yeah. Um, no, she would have to be, obviously you're still alive, so she can't get a disabled widow's benefit. If, uh, no, um, she might be able to get a, if she's 62, she can get a spousal benefit, possibly, depending on how much her benefit amount is. Um, if you have any children under the age of 16 that she is taking care of, she can get what's called the auxiliary child in care benefit. And I did a video on that. Um, this is why I started my website with uh, the playlist is because, you know, I, I say that I did a video on that. Just too many videos. It's hard to wade through. So that's why I did that. Um, so, yeah. Um, or if you have a child that became disabled before the age of 22 um, and is receiving benefits on your record and your wife, that child's mother, is taking care of that child, then you can get auxiliary um, child and care. Yeah. Even if the child is older, the disabled adult child. So, um, okay, yeah. And Deanna's done it without a lawyer. Okay, good, good. Um, well, I always hesitate to say bad things about lawyers, but yeah, that's. You know, the, uh, the lawyers, um, when he goes to the administrative law judge, uh, possibly a lawyer, but uh, the first couple of stages of a disability claim are pretty easy. Um, yeah. So. All right. Um, so. So if you all can help me out and, um, you know, share my channel, we really need to get more information out there to people. There's so many people that are not getting the correct benefit amount. Um, check out my video. I'm not ending. I'm still going to answer more questions, but I just want to throw this in. Um, so please share my channel. I know there's someone out there in that, you know, that is worried whether they're receiving all the benefits are entitled to make sure you share my channel, share my website that, so they can go in there and set up an account, um, again, free. So they can see a playlist and uh, um, check out the videos that pertain to them. There are so many, you know, YouTubers out there that claim to be experts in Social Security, Medicare, and all that kind of stuff. But you know, they're yeah, they're just giving out so much wrong information. It's it's yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, so please share and show me some love, thanks down there, or super chats, or whatever YouTube thing, anything. A cup of coffee would be nice. Um, anything you can do, we'd appreciate it to support the channel so we can keep making, uh, making more videos and getting them out there to people. Um, and if you know anybody at any uh, uh, local news station anywhere in the country, um, yeah, um, I'd be, I'd love to do like an interview in, you know, Dallas or Sarasota or, you know, Poughkeepsie or, you know, news channel. So share my channel and, you know, it's kind of a human interest story of, you know, former social security manager, 
you know, out there, you know, still helping people and, you know, doing all these channels and YouTube and videos and all this kind of different stuff. So yeah. Um, tell them to reach out to me and I'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We need to get, we need to get the word out there. All right. Uh, da, da, da. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling a bit more relief now. It's so stressed the last two days. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Glad we could help. Awesome. I like it. That's why we're doing it. Uh, Lola, since I took my retirement, my social security is a mess. They told me it's five months. I appeal it two times. I proved that was a vacation, sick day, but everything time. They... Okay. I'm trying to, let's see what this, uh, took your retirement, my social security, they hold it for five months. You appealed it two times, prove that my vacation is sick day, but everything time. Okay, uh, maybe is this a, re so this a retirement, is this possibly um, an annual earnings limit issue where you got money after you started collecting your social security benefits and they said you worked too much because you got some money coming in, but it, it's the, the money you got coming in was a previous vacation or sick days or something like that. So that, that happens because um, the computer system is not smart enough to pick it up. So you actually have to have a human being. And uh, so if you went in there and you provided proof that you did, that money was earned before you started collecting social security benefits, then yeah, then you just go in there and provide proof. And, uh, but it shouldn't take five months. It should be pretty quick. Um, but everybody's backed up, but even being backed up five months is too long. So I would reach out to them and, you know, maybe uh, you, you have, um, you can use any office in the country you want to, you know, sometimes when you go to your local office or you go to another office, another social security office, and they say, this is not your office. And it's like, it's, yeah, every office in the country is my office. You know, I pay into social security. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm an American. So every office is my office. So they, yeah, I, I hate it. My, I, my employees never say to, you know, never said that. Um, if you have a pending claim in a particular office, then, you know, that's it. But in your particular case, if you're not getting any satisfaction from your particular office on this particular issue, then you can just very well go to another office and say, hey, or call someone, you know, get another person, get a, ty ty a technical expert in the office you're at or an OS, an operations supervisor and say, hey, you know, isn't five months a little bit too long? You know, um, always be nice, um, you know, and, until, until being nice doesn't work and then be extra nice. <laughs> So that's one of my, uh, um, uh, the, the people in my network that help people out with Medicare and burial insurance, life insurance, all estate planning and all that. I've got uh, my three ends. Number one is if you want, you know, to, to help out the people that uh, look to us for help, then number one, you have to be nice, you know, um, polite, respectful, you know, Marine Corps stuff. You have to be nice. Number two, no pressure. You know, you just provide people the information and you let them decide. So no hard sales or anything. Like that. And you have to be neutral in the sense of um, there are uh, if, if you go to XYZ insurance company to get burial insurance or Medicare or life, whatever the case may be. And the, um, you know, it, the agent works for that company, then what, you know, what policy are they going to say is the best? What's they going to say is, yeah, X, Y, Z. So I only work with brokers. So brokers throughout the country, that means they are contracted and licensed with several different companies. So they work for you and they look for a, a plan or a program, a policy that is best for your particular situation. And they're neutral. They say, okay, Hey, I've looked at all the different, you know, companies for your particular issue, what you need, you know, $5,000, $10,000 in burial insurance or whatever the case may be, life insurance, yada, 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 uh, dental, vision, whatever. And for your particular situation, this looks like it's going to be about the best, but it's your decision. So they have to be neutral. Three ends, nice, no pressure and neutral. So there's that. 
All right, let's see here. Um, my neurologist needs to give me a fusion, but I had to get a clearing from my cardiologist that my heart can handle it. Cardiologist says not yet. They want to put a chip on my chest because I, uh, but I can't have this done without social security because I'm behind on rent. I can't move forward fusion and shit. Wow. Wow. Um, mm. So let's see here. So this is uh yeah, Social Security, Medicare type of issue, perhaps. Yeah, and yeah, you. I mean, if you got a, um, if you're waiting, let me see. Is this the same one? Yeah. So if that's an issue, just uh, yeah, kind of share that with uh, Social Security. All right. Um, I have to call you, and we'll send, and we'll send in share. So we need help. Uh, when is the best time to call Social Security and get through to them? I've sat on the phone tree so long that my battery's died many times. Um, definitely not Monday. Um, definitely not the day after a holiday. Usually Thursday, Friday afternoons, um, you know, up until, you know, about, you know, two, three o'clock or something like that. That's usually the, the best time. And so you can call the, uh, the 800 number, you know, the national number, usually later in the day. Um, West Coast time because they're open, you know, from what seven to seven, seven eight. Um, um, but you can also call your, you know, obviously the local office, and they, you know, will answer phones until four o'clock. So, uh, Tracy, kindness, knowledge is godsend. Thank you so much. Signed up for the MyGov expert. Didn't have a place for other insurance on Medicare, and okay, yep, yep. Um, I think I did, did I have it for other insurance? I, I thought I did, but maybe not. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a work in progress. Still working on it, and uh, so yeah. Any recommendations on the website and the playlist? If you uh, get a playlist, and uh, um, I'm I'm updating that on a regular basis. So, all right. So we are over an hour or so, and it looks like. Uh, got all the questions answered. It's a beautiful thing. So I need uh, y'all to join the team and go out there and share the channel. And uh, I'll do another um, live next week and uh, more the merrier. And we'll see what we can do to make sure people are getting what they're entitled to. All right. Y'all have a beautiful day and an awesome weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.